Hi, welcome back to the Ruckus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. Uh, this time around, we're going to talk about uh, Remote Switch Port Analyzer, R-SPAN, um, which is new in uh, 8080 on the ICX. Um, and so, in, in a previous release, we released ER-SPAN. Um, and so, first, I think it's important to talk about the difference. So, um, there's regular SPAN, or what we used to call mirror and monitoring, which is the ability to capture traffic from one port and mirror it onto another port, whether it be a sniffer on that port or, you know, some sort of packet capture for troubleshooting and analysis or some kind of security device. For some reason, you want to uh, um, mirror the traffic from one port to another. So that's SPAN. Um, ER SPAN is encapsulated. So we take that mirrored traffic, we encapsulate it into a GRE tunnel and transmit it to a destination port on some other router across a layer three network. Um, so the beauty of that is you can be, you know, you can capture traffic from your remote locations, carry it across the GRE tunnel and, you know, um, be able to see it in your, in your sniffer in head office, for example. Um, so the downside of that is that it's not supported in the 7150. The ICX 7150 doesn't support GRE tunnels. Um, so, you know, that's a, that's a minor problem. But the nice thing about ERSPAN, it also keeps the packet header information intact. So um, you can see exactly what VLAN that, that traffic came in on, the QoS bits and, and whatnot. Uh, RSPAN, which is what's new, um, is supported on all the ICX models. So it's, you no longer have the limitation that it's not supported on the 7150. It's supported across all the ICX models uh, and you can mix and match, right? So across your RSPAN network, you can cross multiple switches with that traffic and you can mix and match switches, right? So they don't have to be the same model or, or anything like that. Uh, RSPAN though is layer two only. So you have to have layer two connectivity between but the complete path from the source to the destination. Uh, so you cannot, you know, cross a layer three hop or a WAN at any point. Um, it doesn't, it's not going to get the full VLAN header as well because it's basically switched across an R span VLAN. It's flooded across another VLAN. Uh, so the source port doesn't belong to that R span VLAN, but that R span VLAN has to, has to uh, traverse the complete path from source to destination, uh, regardless of how many hops away it is. So let's have a look at how to configure RSPAN. There is another video on ERSPAN uh, that was done a while ago. So this is specifically on RSPAN, but you'll see how easy it is to configure. It's really not difficult. So I have two routers here. I have a source and destination router. So I have source and destination here. Um, these two are directly connected. Um, and let me show you the, let me show you the connectivity on that. So these two guys are connected on ports 1 slash 1 slash 24. Um, and there is a source port 1 slash 1 slash 1. It's not a phone, but just to show you that it's an end device, uh, 1 slash 1 slash 1 uh, on the source router. And then 1 slash 1 slash 10 is uh, my laptop on the destination. So uh, this port here, the source port, does not need to be in the RSPAN VLAN. It's going to be in whatever VLAN you're capturing the traffic from. Um, it's just the RSPAN VLAN needs to traverse across uh, between the switches. And if there was multiple switches, you would tag that RSPAN VLAN across all of the, the uh, uplinks and downlinks in order to connect that, that layer two VLAN together. And lastly, that same VLAN, the RSPAN VLAN is gonna be tagged on the destination port. So back over to my terminal, we have our source device. So the first thing we do, go into config T as always, uh, create our RSPAN VLAN. Uh, the number really doesn't matter. Uh, we'll make it 4,000. There's not anything normally on 4,000. Um, we're going to tag the uh, the uplink between the switches. So I don't care about my source interface. It can be in, it, right now it's in VLAN 10 and it's going to stay there. I only care about the uh, the port that's carrying the, the R-SPAN VLAN. So we're going to tag E1 slash 1 slash 24, which is my uplink between the switches. We're going to set our uh, destination, so our span uh, destination, and so this is the the uh, destination ports of where you want the traffic to go. So in our case, one slash one slash twenty four to get to the other switch where the destination is. Uh, then we're going to set the source. So 
you need to set the destination first before it'll allow you to set a source. Uh, but we'll do RSpan source. Then you can choose to monitor inbound, outbound, or both. But we'll say we'll say both. Um, then Ethernet or lag. So it's Ethernet in this case. One slash one slash uh, one is going to be my source. Okay. And so so that's it for this switch. So relatively easy. If we look at that configuration again, right? So we've created our RSpan uh, VLAN 4000. We've tagged my port between the switches. We created a destination of uh, port 24, so to get out to the other switch. And then we've monitored inbound and outbound on, on 111. Okay, so that's going to be our source. So then we drop over to our destination switch, config T, um, and we again build our RSpan VLAN. Our span VLAN 4000. Uh, we are now going to tag 1 slash 1 slash 24, which is the port coming from our source, and we're also going to tag um, the uh, the port which is which is our uh, destination port. So where my laptop is, right? So 1 slash 1 slash 10 is going to be where that's at. So it's added both of those, and then lastly, I just need to do the RSpan destination port um, E1 slash 1 slash 10 is my destination. So if I look at the show run here, you will see that uh, that I've created the RSpan VLAN 4000. I've tagged uh, 1 slash 1 slash 10 and 1 slash 1 slash 24. And then I've added the destination of 1 slash 1 slash 10, which is where my laptop is. So uh, if everything works correctly, I should be able to see traffic coming in on 111, or in and out on 111 on the other router on this port. Even though, you know, that VLAN, VLAN 10, where the source is, does not traverse between these switches at all. In fact, it doesn't even exist on this switch. So there's no way I should be able to see any traffic from the 192.168.1 network uh, on this router. Um, so if I hop over to my analyzer here, I'm just going to clear that capture and start a new one. And you can see right away, I can see traffic 192.168.1.20, 1.33. Uh, so I, I am seeing uh, 1.123. So I'm definitely seeing traffic coming from uh, the, the uh, source port on a different switch, even without that VLAN traversing between the switches. So that's it. Pretty easy uh, and a really handy to, tool to have, especially if you've got, uh, you know, a, a laptop or a device that you use as your sniffer on a regular basis or a centralized security device. You can keep that port always plugged into the same place rather than having to drag a laptop all over your buildings, um, you know, with a, with a sniffer application on it. So cool new new uh, feature support on all the ICXs and um, uh, yeah, it's a it's a welcome addition. So thanks for joining. We'll see you next time and take care.